in 1984, I had my colours done. I, I've loved colour all my life. Even when I was a, a little girl, I had a green pencil that I still remember. And I used that until it was too small to use anymore. And I, but I didn't sort of do anything more than colouring in until mm. 1984, I had some stress in my life and I went through a divorce and decided to have my colours done. And I, it made such a difference in my life that I then decided to train as a colour consultant for um, Beauty for All Seasons mm. and did that for um, quite a few years. And I, I found such a difference in people when they knew what colours um, suited them and uh, the best colours for them to wear. And mm. they just became more confident, happier, more vital, and they looked younger. So mm -hmm. that sort of, from, from there, I, I think a colleague mentioned colour psychology and I got really interested. And so I started reading up on it, read a lot of books. I've got probably 200 books in my bookcase on it. Um, not that I've read them all, but I've read, um, I read a lot of the, like Faber Buren and Max Lucia and um, Deborah Sharp, Theo Gim Gimble, Carol Jackson, all different people sort of on different aspects of colour and colour psychology and my, my passion just began then that that's just what I love and from then um, I enrolled in the School of Colour and Design in Sydney and did a three-year course there which taught me all about not so much about colour psychology mostly about colour and colour mixing and all of that and I just loved it and, you know, we had exhibitions with our artworks and everything. It was really um, quite amazing. And, um, and so then I, so I studied at School of Colour and Design. Then I did a graphic design course. I did an interior design course just to add to all the applications of colour. And then from there, I, um, I started a, um, a bachelor degree in social science and majored in sociology and psychology just to give me that understanding and yeah then during that time I, I was writing the book with my friend Lynn Champion um, called The Colour of Sex and it was a, a name that got attention because of the name we got an interview at Prentice Hall and they didn't at that point they didn't call anyone in for interviews they called us in and said yes it's a goer then they were stopped from doing any of those books. They had to do textbooks and technical books. So they passed this to Simon and Schuster, who interviewed us again. And they said, yes, we'll go ahead. Um, and because of the name, the title, we got interviews on radio and TV all over Australia. Um, so I wasn't that wrapped in the title, but it got us doors open for us. So. Um, yeah, so that was in 1999, I think we wrote that. And since then I've been, then I set my website up and everything. And since then I've been, I just do more and more work with colour, observing people and talking to people and clients and family and friends. And um, I just still find it very fascinating. Judy, you are the yeah. lady that needs no introduction. So I'm but I'm going to give it a go anyway okay. and say <laughs> Judy has, has introduced herself, told us about her background and has given us some wonderful insights into the length and the depth of her, of her colour knowledge and her colour learning. And so I'd love to welcome you all to meet Judy Scott Chemist um, and our topic today is colour psychology. And of course, I'm here, my name is Tracy McLeod from Presentation Cells, and I'm here with the fabulous. Hi, Bobby McGrath. I don't know about fabulous, but out of fabulous, Raleigh, North Carolina, USA. So I'm very happy to be here. And Judy, I love you already. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I love you too. <laughs> That's good. That's Everybody good. loves Bobby, Judy. One of the previous. I'm sure. Yeah. One of our previous um, guests said, oh, I love Bobby so much. And I was like, oh, okay, that's great. <laughs> she's, she's got beautiful energy. She has. She has and I feel, I feel people's energy. So I, yes. I can feel it. 
Now, go. I don't there think that you can become an expert in colour psychology without that understanding of energy because colour uh, yes. is energy. Well, well colour is energy. It's mm -hmm. light. It's, it is energy. Um, and a lot of my um, understanding of it is because I'm very intuitive with it. A lot of people read about all the meanings and think they know sure. it all, but it's such a complex field that um, people can people say to me, "Oh, I've chosen this colour," and if you read what's written about it, you know that probably doesn't might not fit that person. Um, and I had a friend um, working with somebody in England, and this lady um, turned up with the red scarf. And I don't, I don't know what she looked like, but I don't think red was her colour. And my friend said, why have you worn the red scarf? And she said, it's because it was there. And I just picked it up and walked out with it. But I knew, I could feel it, that she, was, she had anger in her. So it wasn't passion, it was anger. But that's my intuition working. And when I said to my friend, was she angry? And she said, oh, yes. So... That's, that's part of my skill is having that intuitive feel um, for colour and how it's affecting people. So she could have just been passionate about what she was doing, but it wasn't. It was this anger that came out. And so, obviously with colour, there's, there's, there's a positive and a negative. There's a flip side of yes, yes. passion, um, yes. you know, is anger. Yes. Every colour has that that opposite and you could be working out of either side um, and but most people wouldn't realize that because you know if you don't understand color you wouldn't understand that it has got those two sides so Judy so my question because I'm, I'm going to come from more the novice side because I know that Tracy yep. has a lot of time in the color ecology so you guys are like way above yes. my pay grade okay <laughs> so what I'm looking at is as you're talking about, you know, the positive and negative of color, um, my question is, are we naturally drawn, like, you know, my favorite color is blue. I have a thing for blue, but are we just naturally drawn to a color that is a reflection of us, or are we drawn to color that reflects who we wish we were? It's, it could be both. So okay. a lot of people are drawn to a color because they love it, but mm -hmm. I still believe that they're drawn to it because they need it. If that explain that that they now that's intriguing. They need it. They need it. I, I mean, I have to have blue and orange. If you don't know this about me, Denver Broncos forever. It's like I've got my blue and orange yep. all the time. I'm just saying. But what do you mean we need it? What do you well, mean we need color for emotional well-being? Um, for all sorts of reasons, you may need that colour around you. And so um, if you're a person that um, doesn't take action, you might draw red to you to encourage you to take action or to find a passion. Or So blue, um, blue is integrity, it's honesty, um, it's um, trustworthiness. So if you're, if you're attracted to blue, it may just be that you love blue and blue is the, the right colour for you. But it may also be that you're trying to give that, um, well, some people might be trying to be honest and they're not honest, but, um, yeah. but so it can be all of those different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So for instance, somebody asked me the other day about what if you love um, all the rainbow colours? And I've thought about it and I, I've got a granddaughter who loves all the colours. Um, you've got to buy everything in the rainbow colours for her. And I thought about it and I think rainbow, having loving all those colours is probably um, a balance. So if you're drawing, if you love those colours, you're either um, a very balanced person or you're trying to become balanced. So, it, so that's how the colours can, it can be just because you love them and They've got they they work for you, or it could be because you're trying to draw that energy to you. Interesting. Does that make so sense? Can, 
It does. So, so what I'm thinking is, so can we manipulate our own emotional vibration by the color that we put on for the day? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, I never get a one answer word. Write that down, Tracy. I loved it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I have, I have a friend in England and she just loves color as much as I do. She's not done as much work as I've done with it, but she loves it. And she uses it so brilliantly. And she looks in her wardrobe every morning and says, what color do I need today? And that's how she chooses what to wear every day. Love it. Yeah. Because I know that I use it maybe a little flipped is I'll walk, I'll walk into the closet and I'll think, who do I want to be today? You know, yes. who do well, I want to be yes. today? Yeah, exactly. Because sometimes I want to be an observer. I want to step back and kind of see what's happening around me. Other times I want to be forward, center of attention, yes. authority. And then other times I want to be the safe space to be. And so I play with color. And you mentioned red quite a few times. And I have this love hate with, with red. Okay. So love the blue reds, not so much the catch of orange red. Yes. So is there like, what's, what is that? Because, and I, it's really funny. I have friends, they have the same thing. They love either the orange red or the blue red. And it's like, yes, I'm with people you. are like, so what's the scoop on that? Is that like, what does that say about us? Well, there's, there could be a few things, but the blue red is, um, it's, there's a little bit of authority with it. Um, where the yellow, the yellow red, because or the or true red heading towards the ketchup red, is, it's got a little bit of yellow in it. And so it's heading towards orange. Um, and a lot of people don't like that red, where the blue red is sort of more popular. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's just, it just depends where you're at at the time. And that can change. You can go from liking one or the other over a period of time. And so I think the, the yellow red, it's probably closer to a true red and it's got that passion but it's probably slightly mellowed because it's got some yellow in it. So it's not, mm -hmm. the true red is passion and um, excitement and energy where the yellow sort of mutes that a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. So, that, I mean, there's not a huge amount of difference between those, you know, yellow, red, blue, red, and true red. Well, I want to go down a whole bunny trail of homes and colors because I, I I want to control everything when someone walks into a house for sale. So then I'm going to go ahead and kind of transition over to the occupied home side. Yeah, sure. Because, because what I'm looking at, Judy, is this. It's like, it's like, for instance, there's certain shades of blue and things that I love to wear because of the energy and it just looks great with my hair, you know, yeah, all those yeah. vanity things, right? Yes. But when it comes to my house, there are different shades of blue that I like to use because I feel like it's it's a, a safe, cozy type blue. And um, in the staging world, what we're trying to do is to get to where people feel comfortable in a home and that it feels familiar to them. So now you guys are all the way over there in Australia and I'm all <laughs> the way over here in the US and we have a lot of places in between. So. Um, my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but different colors mean different things to different to different cultures. Is that correct? Yes, I can. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so, so does the culture, the cultural imprint, does that matter? Um, I, I, I obviously don't know all the different ones, but let's say there's a culture that doesn't like blue. So. How, if you just naturally drawn to blue, I mean, is there like another green you use instead or help me? Um, I think that, I mean, blue is universally liked. Oh, okay. And, and men love blue. Mm -hmm. So I think it's one color that's not culturally, I think you're fairly safe okay. with that. Um, and you might, depending on what country or, or the, nationality of the people you're dealing with you might have to just change it a bit to suit them but I would ask uh, them and, and okay. if you need to change it that little bit but um, some of the other, other colors are more green a lot of countries don't like green um, really interesting yes yes um, 
they see it as a, um, a, a negative or an ill omen or whatever. Um, really interesting. Yeah. Where blues don't mm -hmm. seem to be quite the same. So blues okay. you're fairly safe with. Um, but mm -hmm. if you were dealing with someone from another culture, I would certainly talk to them about what the blue means to them. And because okay. and ask, do they like that blue? Because they just may not. But if they like it and have no issues with it, I think it's a great colour to use because the majority of people do love blue. Well, one of the things too is that I think um, sometimes when I'm staging a property, I happen to know that that particular neighborhood maybe draws the expats from certain parts of the world. Yeah. And so I keep that in mind when I make my staging recommendations, yes. because there's one parts of town where gold walls are not a thing right now happening yes. here in the United States. However, I do know that there are cultures where gold walls are embraced. They're actually sought after. Yes. So when I realize I have a community where it pulls a lot of folks from that culture, I may not do all the walls in gold, but I'll do certain walls in gold to help them feel more comfortable. Mm. So what other kind of insights can you provide about how to use color for houses? I think, I think as you say, blue is very good because most people are comfortable with it. That's a relaxing okay. color. Um, yellow is one that's an issue. Um, really interesting. Yes, you've got to be very careful using yellow okay. because it creates anxiety. So if you if you like putting it in a bedroom, I just I read recently of a, a home decorator doing a bedroom for a child, and mm -hmm. she loved yellow. So she painted the walls in yellow. She had a yellow doona cover or bedspread on the bed. Um, every accessory in the room was yellow, and wow. I thought, oh no, that child will not sleep properly, and then she'll be anxious, and nobody will know why. Wow. So that's wow. one major colour. Other rooms, not so bad, but I would never do a whole mm -hmm. room all in yellow um, for wow. the reason that it creates anxiety mm -hmm. in, in many people. And I had, um, some years ago, I had a client who called me and said, look, I'm just so anxious, I'm distressed. So we talked about, you know, the colours in the home and her bedroom was a rental, so she couldn't mm -hmm. change much, but her bedroom had a lot of yellow in it. So we wow. sort of had to change anything she could change we change to you know a, a blue or a um, green or you know something like that mm -hmm. and I think we the, I think even the carpet was yellow so we got her to get a rug to put on the carpet to hide most of it and she mm -hmm. called me sometime later and she said oh it's made such a difference that anxiety is all gone so that's definitely a color to be careful of oh I have a question pink yeah. Pink. Pink. Is pink a hard color? Because I was told pink is like a hard color. It like drains the testosterone out of men like that. It, look, it, it can. And I again, it's a color I'd be a little bit careful of. If I was going to use pink, I would use it in accessories rather okay. than paint the whole. Um, but if you painted the child's uh, little girl's room in a soft uh, pink, that would mm -hmm. be okay. But yeah. um, you see, it doesn't matter what color you, you put in your home, you need you need something to balance it. So you can either, either use complementary colours or, you know, colours that will go with whatever you've painted it. And so, okay. again, my friend in England has mostly white in her, her unit, um, mm -hmm. but she adds, so her, the couch she's got is white, um, but she adds touches of colour in the cushions, um, in accessories that she's got in, in her home. So she'll add a little bit of magenta, um, some uh, soft green maybe, maybe a little bit of blue. Um, turquoise, she loves turquoise. So she puts accents of those colours to, um, to to bring energy to the room. And then you know, she she loves yellow, but because, you know, she wouldn't do a whole room in yellow. Yellow was her favourite colour since childhood. So she will buy daffodils and put a vase of daffodils uh, on the coffee table. Right. So, yeah. so she balances everything that way. So you can still have a lot of white and mm -hmm, add colour sure. in accessories to lift the whole energy. Um, so pink, what yeah, I, pink what I'd I, be careful with men. So what I love about what you're, how you're talking about colour is I have a term for that. 
And when I'm staging a house, I'll say, okay, we need to put color over in this corner, blah, 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 blah. I'll talk about it. And they'll say, why? And I'll go, because we need a shot of happy. That's why. Yeah. Yes. And so that's what I'm yes. always looking for in the houses yes. is to, to help that. So I, I know what colors make me happy. So I guess I'm looking for a, a universality of like, what are the happy colors? But I, I guess it would be predicated on the walls and the floors and the yes. other items. And Okay. The yellow okay. is a happy color, even to put mm -hmm. a bunch of flowers in the corner. Sure. You know, yeah. Yellow, yellow is great for that sort of thing. It's yeah. just not good to do a whole bedroom in it. Yeah, well, nothing's, nothing is more happy than in the autumn here, you know, as we're getting cool, is to have a big vase of sunflowers. I mean, yes. that yes. is just like, and what I love about that is I can put it into a cool colored house, as well as what I call a spice colored house, and they just translate beautifully. Yes. They so, do, yes. Mm -hmm. so, yes, that's definitely. Anyway, Tracy, I, I see hers open. Interesting when you were talking about... Um, colors uh, blues actually because I've read that in some countries blue is well blue is a color of pornography in some countries and um, I did work with a well blue movies I suppose and yes, oh, yes. I, guess so. I did work with a client who was Asian and they said you know we just don't want that blue that nobody likes and I didn't know what the blue that nobody likes is because it was a you know it was it was a different culture a different way mm -hmm. of seeing the colors so so that was really interesting but um, yes and I think that's why you've got to always ask the client you know if there's a particular colors that they're not comfortable with because mm -hmm. I mean even provinces in different countries might have um, mm -hmm. likes and dislikes of certain colors yeah. it's true so that's yeah so I you really do have to ask the client because I mean, we can't be over every single spot in the world and what colours they love and what they don't like. So I think you have to base it on what they they say. And it so would depend on the if they've lived in, in a particular, if they've lived in the US or Australia all their life, mm -hmm. that might be different to someone who's recently moved, recently moved there. Good point. So, and the, and and the overlay, the overlay of... Um, of colour psychology. So the psychology of colour overlaid with the culture and the general likes and dislikes of a of a group of people, you know, of a cohort that you can be where we live in a sunny climate. So that influences the colours that we use and the colours that we like. And you know, obviously your colours are are influenced by by history as well, Bobby, as you know, as mm -hmm. as what likes and dislikes there are. You have a lot of granite that's available, readily available in your area. So you're able to, um, to you know, those colours become part of the fabric of, of life. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And I have what we call wood aholics here. There are log cabins and things where everything is wood, 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 wood floors, wood walls, you know, hand hewn wood furniture, wood cabinets, everything wood. And it's like, make that sexy. And so that's when you pull out your greens and your reds, <laughs> you know, so, yes. but, um, and it, from different parts of the country, it's just like with you guys, you know, it's like when I go out to California, some parts of California are the beach, lots of sun, others up in the mountains and, you know, it's early evenings and you have lower light. Um, there's, I mean, it's in everything in between. And so um, I'm just, this is one of the things Things that drive me is Judy. Okay, you know those articles, and now it's worldwide because there's an article that says, "Oh, this is the it color for this year," and I go, "Oh, no," because the it color that this paint company has now announced it may be a beautiful shade, let's say of green, hmm. in a certain sunlight, but in another sunlight or against wood trim against white trim it's like nails on a chalkboard and so um do you have any insider techniques i'm not going to say tips and tricks that drives me crazy no because this takes technique so any any techniques or things that we need to know as color people when a color is named the it color of the year how what should we look at so that we can 
uh, get the same feeling of the color of the year, but it's right for the surface for that particular house. Are there any techniques for us to consider? My, my only thing would be to change the tone of the color slightly so that okay. it works where you're putting it. Um, okay. Or use it just in accessories and don't go and paint a whole lot of walls or anything. So there use it in accessories too. So you can paint the walls whatever color might work with it, but mm -hmm. use it as an accessory so that okay. It doesn't dominate and doesn't change because next year it's another color. So yes. Okay. So all of you out there, I'm looking straight in camera right now. You listen to Judy. She's right. I'm telling you, put neutral colors on your wall. Knock yourself out. You can be fashion forward each and every year. Change your pillows, change your rug, add a different piece of art. I actually had a client, she would take her art. It was a canvas piece. And every once in a while, I'd see her out in a garage. She'd be up there with a with a paintbrush and she'd be changing the color of the dress <laughs> of the lady. She says, I'm redecorating the house and I love this piece of art. So she would just change the color of the dress. I so thought of you. Yeah, I'm it was mad. fabulous. I was like, yeah. like Lee, you're like fabulous. And she goes, I know. <laughs> yeah, because I not it. many people can afford to change all the colors in the house That's every right. year because a new color has come out and i think you you still should be choosing colors you love thank you that's and, a great and make that's it work great. within your environment and there's such a broad range within the colors you love you know like you add a drop of white or black or you know to to a color and you change mm. it it's a different color so every drop or you add another color to it every drop changes that color it's the differences can be very subtle but very quickly you get your unique shade or yes. something that you love and, and then you just need to try that in on the walls or wherever you're yeah. doing it to see whether it works with that light or not I mean there's there's thousands of different whites for instance and yes. you put them on your wall and they can look totally different yep mm -hmm. If they I see. on a swatch, they look the same. Mm. Exactly. Preach it. I went into a house where they didn't have one, they didn't have two, they didn't have three, but they had four different whites on the trim. Oh. Four. So I would pick a wall color and it would look beautiful. And then I'd walk over to make sure it looked good. And then the sun over here, totally different thing. And that's mm -hmm. when we did this. I found four different whites in there. So, Judy, yes. you're. you're Yes, yes, yes. And yes, when yes. you put them together on a wall, they can look, depending on the light, in different, on different walls, they can look. It's true. Some they look good and some they look different. Some will look pink, some will look yellow, because the undertone yep. comes through then with a different light on it. And when they have white trim and then they go, oh, I'm just going to put white on the walls, I just, oh, don't do it, don't do it, because they just pick a white. They're like, it mm. doesn't matter. And so I'll, I'll, this is my, this is my technique because I'm not going to use those other terms, but I'll take a, a plain piece of typing paper when they swear that, oh, that's pure white, that, that term's pure white. And I'll put that piece of paper against it and they'll go, that looks blue or that looks yellow or that looks, and I'll go, see, see. Mm. So that agreeable gray is a color that everybody uses here for the walls. It's beautiful until it's not. And so I'll yes. tell them, we'll pick something that gives you that flavor but it's not that color. Mm. And, so, and do you want a slight pink tinge to it or a yellow tinge or a blue tinge? I Judy, think you'd be uh, fun to take into some of these historic homes. I'd say, just step back, let Judy do her thing. <laughs> <laughs> I would love I'd that. I'd love to do that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Have, do you ever come stateside? No, not for a long, long time. Oh my gosh. Well, if you ever get out here, I think the East, oh, is the East Coast is further away than the West Coast, right? Yes. Uh, so oh, no, right. the East Coast. Um, I don't know, is it? I, I, I don't know either. No. Well, come see me and I will just like take you <laughs> to houses from the 1700s that look at and all the way up. So I'd mm. love that. That would be fun. Because colors the colors be have fun. to change, don't they? You can't just use modern day colors. In a 1700 you, house. You cannot. No. People try it. Doesn't People work. Try it. Uh-uh. Yeah, that's good. 
So, yeah. Judy, what's your feeling about the uh, the tendency here? Certainly, has been for the for the last decade, really, to have black, white, and grey as the house colours. What is your feeling on that design? I actually oh. don't like it. Mm. Um, I believe we all need colour for to to lift the energy. Um, and I know that industrial look and everything is is everywhere here at the moment. Um, and that's where they use and the minimalist look and things they use all the black, white and grey. Um, just energy wise, I don't think it's good. It's it's neutral, but it's um, look, I have I've got a friend who went through a divorce quite some years ago now. And when I met her, all she wore was black, grey and white. And I could never figure it out. And I, every time we went to the shops, she went straight for the black, white and grey clothing, which I would never look at. And in the end, I got her into colours and she doesn't look at black, white and grey anymore. But I realised she was in camouflage because she was hiding from the world after her divorce. And if you think of um, the streets, probably just about everywhere, there's a lot of grey everywhere and black and white. So you've got the um, footpaths or sidewalks that are all um, in a grey colour, grey cement or whatever. And so she was blending into that background. So with homes, I sort of feel like they're in hiding a little bit. They're not showing any personality. They're hiding behind those colours. Yeah. And, and you know, yeah, sorry. Sorry, Bobby. There's a... There's an Australian website that a few years ago, Australian Paint Company, did a survey and um, they found that 66% of Australians were painting their homes white, the interiors of their homes white, for fear of getting it wrong. So that yes. is exactly mm -hmm. what you're saying there, that they, yes. that, yeah. that because we obviously have an unconscious awareness of how much colour can, can project our personalities, we are, you know, there's that fear factor that comes mm. into people's homes. And yes. So they're not living their, their true potential in a way, in a, in a black exactly right. Home. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And it's the same in their clothing choices and that. Mm. You know, mm. look how many people do wear black and dark grey and um, there's no colour. Maybe so, blue. Yeah. Yeah. So I think not that that's blue um, that everybody hates, Bobby. No, no. Yes, not that, not that clear, but... <laughs> so, I have a very dear uh, agent who I adore and everything she has is black and white and uh, she confided in me and she says I'm colorblind and so she says as long as I buy everything black and white I'm good and so every once in a while she'll have a color on but the base is black and white with a shot of happy color and so I like to encourage her but um, yes. yeah so as when I see that color. When, when I see that I think because uh, men, is it true that men have a tendency to be colorblind more than more yes. so than women? Yes. So when I see that with men, I think, oh, they they just might be colorblind, you know, or well, men men don't see the number of colors that women see. So we we if we look at well even blue any color really, we will see more variations than the men will see. So I find that quite interesting that. You know, I think I just saw something there and it was like had a man here, a woman here and the man that was like blue, green, red, orange, yes. yellow. And the woman was like blueberry, boysenberry, blah, 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 you know, and all these different pink, 20 pink, separate. All. Magenta, yeah. Purple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I was thinking, but does that also have to do with the fact that women use easily two to three times more words per day than men? I'm sure they're all connected. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yes, so I just yes. My question is, is it nature or nurture? You know, are I you sort of, I'm thinking it's nature, it but I, I couldn't be certain. Interesting. Interesting. I, so. I think, you, you know, if you're born a man, you that's um, maybe you've got different brain structure or whatever. Um, that... I'm reading a book right now, and they very much go into the depth of this and explain how the brains are different and it has to do with gestation 
all the way through, um, I think it's like five or six years of age. And it's, it, it explains the paths that are laid into place. And so it's yes. really fascinating because it's not black or white, man, woman, there's, no. there's areas between, right? And so, but once you start understanding, it starts making sense to me. Yes. And it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's fascinating really. So I, I truly believe there's a lot of nature, but I also believe that nurture definitely can, um, what's the word? Not guide, but can, what's the word, well, you know, where it's like change, influence. It can change. Influence, it can influence. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. And colors. I find it fascinating. I'll go into houses and I'll have little girls who love black. And then I'll have little boys who love, let's say, bright orange, right? And so it's it's interesting because here people have a tendency to this is the boy color, this is the girl color. People are getting away from that now, thank goodness. Because what I see are kids who just love color. Yes. Like you said earlier, you have a, a granddaughter who she loves all the it. colors. Yes. Yeah. Then she loves your blouse, doesn't she? Oh, she does. She she loves. It's actually interesting because one of my twin grandsons, he, he'll often comment on clothing I'm wearing yeah, because he yeah. loves the colors or something and she always does it as well. Yeah, because I was real interested. I wore my blue just for you. Oh, because thank it's, you. It's, it's beautiful. Thank and you. It does it's like my blue. You. Yes, well, it's thank beautiful you. on you. I was like thinking to myself, I wonder what color Judy's going to wear. And so you've covered the bases. You wore them all. I just thought I'll put the whole lot on because <laughs> I've got yeah. a lot of colours, but um, and I I'm denied about what I should wear, and I thought no, I'll go multicoloured. <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking, what colour that she wears is it going? What's it going to tell me about her? <laughs> and so, what your blouse tells me is that you got it going on, and you get it. <laughs> uh, I, get, I do get it. And I'm probably yeah. aiming for balance. There you go. Um, I'm not there saying I am balanced, but I'm aiming for it. <laughs> That's wonderful. I love that. I love that. Judy, we've so just touched the tip of the iceberg. Yes. Let's talk about uh, your book is being relaunched this mm -hmm. year. So The Colour of Sex. Yes. I really yes, want to be... ask you, what is The Colour of Sex? Well, Blue. Red, no, red, I'm is, kidding. <laughs> red is sexual passion. So, of course, that, that is the colour. We're pink is um, unconditional love so i know that everyone gives red roses and and that for valentine's day expressing love but it really is sexual passion they're expressing um and also because it's just been it's a common thing that the common color you do for valentine's day but unconditional love pure love is pink where red is sexual passion so that's it. and the book that. doesn't we don't even go into a lot of we talk about all different colors um so the first first book talked about underwear and um the colors and style of your underwear it talked about bedrooms and the color and style in your bedrooms and and all of that to give people a clue on um the messages that they're sending because every time you choose a color or style you're sending messages to people and so the what we're doing now is we're updating that the original book um, and we've created three books so the first one will be um, underwear and those sort of things and there's a lot more in, in it than that but the second one is all about bedrooms and style and the third one is about people and their style and their decorating style how um, what you wear and everything can fit with that decorator or give clues about your decorating style. Um, whether they will be printed as three separate books or whether they'll put it into one book, we don't know. Or even whether they'll even print it. <laughs> so if they don't print it, we'll have to do it on online as a, probably initially as an e-book. So yeah. but we've got to get it all finished first and COVID sort of stopped us meeting and doing all of that, but we're getting there. So I have a question, Judy. What is the color of COVID? Oh, COVID to me would be a very dirty olivey green color. Oh, interesting. Okay, an olivey green color. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna wear that color. <laughs> no, no. I'm gonna stay away from that. Yeah. I have a story good. about a, a colleague. This is years ago. 
and she wasn't feeling very well and she was sitting in the chair at home and her husband walked in and he and she said I don't feel well at all and he said oh you look fine to me and because she always wore the right colors and she thought oh, I'll just test this, this out so she went into the bedroom and found a scarf that she had there that was in a, a dirty olive green and she just put that around her, her neck and sat back down in the chair and when he came past the next time he said oh you're right you don't look well can, can I get you anything <laughs> so that shows the power of color and I love it yeah. wearing the right colors yeah. very good. good and that's okay some people the olive green suits so it wouldn't work for them right right where can everyone find you Judy um, on my website at empoweredbycolour.com and colour is spelt C-O-L-O-R for the Americans. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we get challenged when you there. guys throw the U in. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. It's, um, uh, you have colour meanings on there. You have I've got, um, yep. different uses. You are also um, planning to uh, create a course on colour psychology. I'm which planning to do that and I've got a whole lot of books that mm -hmm. are, I've started. I haven't got them all finished yet. So they will be probably e-books initially anyway. Nice. Um, but I, I talk about the meanings of colours, personality colours, so what it means, you know, your favourite colour. Um, I talk about weddings and colours, and that's a little bit complicated because you've always got two parties with a wedding. Um, I talk about business colours, uh, just a little bit on cultural colours. So I cover a, a broad, and I, I will be, as soon as I've got these books finished, I'll start working on children and colour. Oh, so that's another nice. interesting Oh, topic. fantastic. That will be great. Because kids are kids are naturally drawn to colours and yes. and express themselves through colour, so it's it, it that's a that's a phenomenal story to tell. And mm, even yes. having books that explain to kids what you know what the colours, what the psychology of the colours that they're wearing are, and you know, in I had thought I had thought to do a, book, a children's book. Mm. I've sort of got that in the back of my mind to do a children's. Oh, book. that's great! That is great. Because I remember letting my son dress himself, you know, when they're little, you pick out everything. Yeah. And then what I would do is I would say, okay, these are the green shorts you're going to wear today. Here's the three shirts. You pick one of these shirts. And they would pick, and I'd say, I pick these shirts because there's a little bit of green in there. So you have that matches and I would teach them. And then every once in a while, I would do a free day. And I would say, they, you know, they would like be waiting because there's like three. And I say, you pick anything you want. And oh my lord, the combinations that would come out, you know, mm. and they would always wear suspenders. I always loved that. And they were like <laughs> had colors and patterns and everything, and they would just love it. And they would all day they would be the happiest that they were because mm. they picked everything out. So that's great. Love it. Yeah, kids, it's great when kids do that. It seems to work. Uh-huh. It does. It does. So please come back and visit us another time soon, Judy. Well, thank you. And and uh, you know, give us some updates on where you're at, where your where your books are at, and where the website is at, and where the training yes. program or the school is at. And we'd love to hear we'd love to hear updates over time because you oh, just thank have you. such a wealth of knowledge. Thank you, thank Judy. you, thank you. It's thank been you. interesting. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. Sure. So I'm Bobby McGrath, and that's Tracy McLeod, and, and we this have. Has been the Judy. occupied oh home. the occupied home oh yes of course. Never. <laughs> so we're supposed to be doing that smooth at the end we're working on it <laughs> that's right bobby mcgrath the uh occupied consultation specialist tracy mcleod from house proud home sellers judy scott chemist from empowered by color and this this is, is the, the occupied home 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 together now <laughs> see you guys Beautiful. next time <laughs> okay bye bye